so the Living Tribunal makes its first full-on appearance in Marvel Comics in Strange Tales issue number 158. But what's actually interesting here is that Strange Tales issues number 156, 57, 58, and 59 were actually part of the sort of ongoing combined story whereby Doctor Strange encounters a foe named Umar the uh, Unmentionable and by virtue of being unable to defeat Umar on his own, releases a multi-dimensional being named Zom. And what we see is that when Zom is released, uh, of course, Doctor Strange attempts to stop Zom after uh, Zom begins to run amok, and the Living Tribunal appears almost immediately. The Living Tribunal dispatches Zom fairly quickly, and then decrees to uh, Doctor Strange that Zom, or I'm sorry, that uh, the planet Earth has to be destroyed. From here, we see Doctor Strange pleading with the Living Tribunal, asking the Living Tribunal why it is that the Living Tribunal has simply just arrived here and passed judgment without offering any, uh, or without allowing Doctor Strange to present any real case here. We see the Living Tribunal responding to uh, Doctor Strange, telling him that the laws, the sort of uh, law and order court system type of scenario that we have here on the planet Earth has no real bearing on the uh, Living Tribunal, that the Living Tribunal exists beyond dimensions and therefore uh, does not really care about the wishes and wants of the inhabitants of the planet Earth. But we also see that the Living Tribunal wants to sort of show Doctor Strange what it is that he's done that has led to this circumstance whereby Earth has to be destroyed. Now, of course, this is really just Marvel giving us a chance to understand the bigger picture and to simply just give us a chance to see things from the Living Tribunal tribunal's perspective. And what we see is that by virtue of Doctor Strange releasing Zom in order to help him defeat Umar, that Doctor Strange has uh, sort of upset this cosmic balance. Now what this cosmic balance is, we don't really understand yet. But what we see is that the Living Tribunal goes as far as to decree that his three faces have uh, judged against the planet Earth and Doctor Strange. Now this is very important when it comes to the Living Tribunal, and the reason why is because all three faces of the Living Tribunal have to agree on a judgment in order for that judgment to uh, to be passed, in order for that judgment to be implemented. And what we see is that the first unshrouded face, the face that we can fully see, is the face of equity. This is the face of the Living Tribunal that pertains to being just, that pertains to being unbiased. The second face is the face of revenge. This is the face of the Living Tribunal which seeks out to uh, to implement or I guess to uh, affect those or to judge those that it perceives to have harmed them or to have intentionally done something to upset uh, the cosmic balance of a particular dimension, universe, or uh, reality. The third face and the uh, completely shrouded face is the face of necessity. And this is simply the face that represents the fact that something needs to be done about this particular action. And in order, uh, again, in order for the Living Tribunal to actually implement judgment, that all three of these faces have to agree on uh, the fact that some judgment needs to be implemented in order for the Living Tribunal to act. From here, we get an explanation of what it was, what kind of uh, cosmic imbalance Doctor Strange had created that required the actions of the Living Tribunal. And what we learn is that when all realities were created, when all uh, dimensions have either come into existence currently or had previously been created, that in terms of uh, Doctor Strange's place in the cosmos and in the multi in the multiverse, that he is simply but one facet. That every single dimension has a master of the mystic arts, more or less. The dimension of Dormammu uh, houses Dormammu himself, who is the master of the mystic arts within his own dimension, and so on and so forth. And what we see is that by virtue of uh, Doctor Strange releasing Zom, that Doctor Strange has created a circumstance whereby there are now two uh, masters of the mystic arts, more or less, in the same dimension. And the problem with this is that it's upset the cosmic balance. And so the Living Tribunal has decreed that the planet Earth needs to be destroyed in order to keep this from happening again. What we see is that, uh, of course, uh, Doctor Strange pleads with, um, with the Living Tribunal, telling the live Living Tribunal that not all hope is lost, that the Earth is isn't necessarily this place that inherently and uh, inherently houses evil that it's a place that can be saved and so of course we see the living tribunal at the end of uh, of strange tales issue number 158 offering a circumstance or offering a uh, opportunity to dr strange to save the planet earth where dr strange can take a period of time to demonstrate that the earth is not beyond saving that the earth is an inherently good place which of course he is successfully able to do and the living tribunal withdraws now 
from here, we switch forward several years to uh, The Silver Surfer, Volume 3, Issue Number 31. And all this really does is uh, give us a better understanding of the faces of the uh, Living Tribunal. And what we learn here is that the faces of the Living Tribunal are not absolute. That is to say, the faces of vengeance, necessity, and equity are not an absolute standard in terms of how they're perceived. That an individual that looks upon the uh, Living Tribunal will see the faces of vengeance, necessity, and equity relative to their stance and their life experiences within the Marvel Cosmos. And so, Doctor Strange would look upon these three faces and see something vastly different than what uh, the Silver Surfer would see. Now what we also see is uh, several years later, actually in 2006, we switch over to uh, She-Hulk Volume 2, issue number 12. And what we see here is again a little bit more of an expansion in terms of the, uh, the Living Tribunal, whereby we learn about the fourth face of the Living Tribunal. And this is something that I'd hope you'd notice by this point, that the Living Tribunal has four sides to its head, but we only ever see three faces. What's really interesting about this particular scenario is that uh, the Living Tribunal, again, rehashes the uh, the various, the, the three faces that he has, but then he mentions his fourth face, his hidden face, and he tells She-Hulk to simply look upon his hidden face, and when she does, she sees a reflection of herself. And what the uh, what the Living Tribunal tells to her is that the, I guess, the, the fourth face is the face of a mirror. It's the cosmic mirror, which reminds people to always judge others as they would have themselves judged. Now, whether or not this is Marvel uh, attempting to maybe set up some sort of moral code or attempting to elevate the living tribunal to being a reflection of uh, the one above all is something that we're not entirely sure about. If anything, I would go as far as to say that this may very well be, uh, I guess, a step in a different direction that we had seen in the uh, Silver Surfer Volume 3, issue number 31, where uh, I guess the Living Tribunal had told the Silver Surfer that at one point in time, the fourth face could have represented the stranger. But regardless of the circumstances, the Living Tribunal is a very... I guess a very rigid and a very uh, absolute character, and, and this is something that I find pretty refreshing about his role in the Marvel Universe, that there are a lot of characters whose motivations, whose machinations, whose desires in the Marvel Universe uh, could be interpreted, could really be looked at in a multitude of different ways, and are really subjective based on the storylines, based on the events that are taking place, but with the Living Tribunal, it's not that way. The Living Tribunal only shows up in times when the multiverse, or a particular universe, is threatened to the point that it upsets some kind of cosmic balance. Now, this element of the Living Tribunal only appearing when a cosmic balance has been upset is something I would like for you to keep in the back of your head because this will become very important when we get into the Infinity Gauntlet and we see Eternity, uh, I guess, appealing to the Living Tribunal and asking the Living Tribunal to intervene regarding the actions of Thanos' possession of the Infinity Gauntlet. But again, with regards to our discussion about the One Above All and the Living Tribunal, an important thing to bear in mind here is that, of course, the Living Tribunal is second to the One Above all, but these two individuals exist outside the realm of the of, of a single universe. They exist in a, a, I guess, in a position to where they oversee multiverses. And while the Living Tribunal exists to judge all the multiverses and to ensure that cosmic balances remain, that you're talking about characters who have such a high caliber level of power that there really is no difference between the two of them. That individuals in the Marvel Universe would simply look upon both the one above all and the Living tribunal and see them equally because their power could only be quantified by simply saying they can do everything. There's really no point at which you could say one of them could do more than the other. Of course, I would go as far as to say that the one above all could easily eliminate the living tribunal being that the one above all was the one who created the living tribunal. But again, at this point, you're talking about a level of power that's so extreme that there's really no differentiation between uh, how, how their powers would be perceived if they ever were to use them to their full extent. Extent. With that being said, uh, this is pretty much it when it comes to the Living Tribunal. Again, he's very rigid. He's very uh, absolute in terms of his stance in the Marvel Universe. And there really isn't a whole lot to offer in terms of discussion, in terms of interpretation of the Living Tribunal, because there really isn't anything to interpret. He simply just exists to carry out the judgment of the One Above All and to ensure that cosmic balances remain in check so that no one universe becomes a threat to any of the other universes within the Marvel Multiverse. With that being being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.